Hello everyone, I hope you're well. <clears throat> Welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought this time around I'd create a seasonal make and we do a square format. So I've got a piece of white Pink Frog Smooth card, which is six, six inches square. And I'm going to place this onto a six and a half inch square card blank. So this piece is six inches square. And what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use my four inch round gel press. Now, if you haven't got a gel press, just create a circle in any shape or form that you want and colour it however you want to create the circle. I'm using the four inch circle gel press because it's in my cupboard. I haven't used it for a bit and I don't like to have products and not use them. So I'm going to use the gel press and we're going to go for a, a wintry card this time around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Hickory Smoke and Salty Ocean. I'm going to have a scrap of card just on the side, just to brayer off any excess colour. I'm going to take my Hickory Smoke and I'm just going to brayer my brayer across the ink pad and just pick up plenty of ink from the ink pad. And I'm just going to apply that ink all over. Let's move this card out of the way just for now. I'm going to apply the ink all over my gel press. What I find quite surprising is the amount of ink that's actually left on the brayer. It always surprises me every time when I look at the amount of ink on my brayer. So that's the amount of ink that's still left on the brayer. You can see there's quite a bit of ink left on there. You can see that I've done this before because these are the backgrounds I've created before and this will create another winter card for me. So it's perfect. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to use my Salty Ocean and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that colour. Not too much as you can see, very patchy, just a little bit of colour because this is a very strong colour and you don't really want to cover up all that grey. As you can see, way too much colour. So I'm just going to bray this colour off onto a piece of card. And if you keep brayering over, you can smooth out that Distress Oxide ink, which will create another background for you. Okay. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to spritz my hand with water like so and then I'm just going to flick the gel press just with water just with flicks of water you can use a brush if you want but that will give me finer flicks of water and I don't want fine flicks of water I want more I can't pick this up now I want more of a reaction with that water so I'm using flicks from my hand just so it gives me more of a reaction. Let's just clean up our area. Just give that a nice dry. And then what I'm going to do is take my piece of Pink Frog card, which is six inches square, and it's up to you which way you place this. So I'm then going to place this on my card. Now if I just leave it like that you can see that it starts to move. Now if you allow it just to sit on the card a few moments that ink absorbs into the card and moves a little bit less. If I instantly pick this up now what this ink does it starts to move towards the centre and you can get a puddle which I don't necessarily want. I will show you that when I lift it up because I've got one done that I've done before. So if you allow this to rest, you get a different look. If you press, you're going to move that ink. If you press it, it will move even more. But if you allow that just a few moments, just to absorb into the card before you lift it, you get a different look. I'm going to lift this sooner than I, sooner than I want 
So if I lift this, let me show you. You instantly get movement in your card. Let's just dab up this little bit of excess. So what you get is you instantly get movement. It sort of moves towards the centre and out towards the edges. Now, if you let it sit for, say, three or four minutes, this is the look you get. Slightly more intense and the colour really absorbs into the card. This isn't given time to absorb into the card, but that's fine because that also creates a wonderful background. But it's got more movement. It's sort of more watery effect. So we'll let that dry a little bit. Then we can come and have another look at that later. But let me just put them side by side, just so you can see the difference. This one has been allowed to sit on the card for about five minutes or so. And it's just allowed to rest and stay where it's put. In other words, none of this has moved towards the outside and it's not got any, we've not, the ink has stayed where we've put it if we've allowed it to sit. So just wanted to point that out. What you can also do is obviously you've got a little bit of ink on here. If you want to add that to your background, you can just dab it to your background just to pick up the excess ink on there. Just add it to your background. And then if you don't want to leave that any remnants of distress oxides on there, just give your gel press a wipe. I was going to say, let's move this out of the way. It's, honestly, it's easier said than done. Right, what I've done next is I've created an aperture with the same gel press. So what I've done is I've inked the gel press and I've pressed it on my copier paper. And then I've cut the inside out. Not very, not very straight, I hasten to add, but that doesn't matter. Not a problem at all. So what I've got then is, let's move this all out of the way. What I've got then is I've then got a mask for my design, which is going to work quite nicely. So I've got something that will mask that out. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my Fallen Leaves stamp set. Let's just take this. And we're going to take this foliage stamp here. There we go. I'm going to take the foliage stamp. I'm just going to take my acrylic block. Now, I've actually cut this from copier paper. As you know, I've mentioned many times before, if you cut this aperture out of 300 GSM card, you're going to end up, this is in the way, you're going to end up with a lip. When you use copier paper, it's flat to your project. So you've got no lip on there. So that's perfect. It means you can stamp on there beautifully. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to take this foliage stamp. You wouldn't ink your stamp over your work. It's not good practice. I'm doing it just so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just inking that up. I've actually got the date on the back of my Versafine Claire Nocturne ink because I just keep a check on how old the ink pad is in case I just need to renew that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this a little bit just so that I can work at an angle just to see what I want. And I can see exactly here where I want to stamp. So I'm just going to add some of this foliage just to the top edge. And I'm just allowing that just to sit on there because I've got that oxide layer on that background. So because I've got that oxide layer, it's like a, a shield before that card layer. So obviously the Versafine Claire needs a little bit more time just to soak into that layer. And also that Versafine Claire will sit a little bit on that layer. So 
So because it sits a little bit on that layer, you, you may need to blot. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit more, a bit more line there. There we go. So it, it may need blotting just because you've got that oxide layer on there, but we'll sort that out shortly. So I'm just turning my project a little bit. And what I would suggest is that you ink more of the stamp than you actually need. Make sure you ink more of it than you actually need. And make sure that you give that plenty of inking. And turn the angle of your stamp just to make sure that it just looks a little bit different each time. And you can lift your acrylic block just to get that leverage. Now what I would suggest you do is that you always just, just lift your card just so that you can, let me just show you, just so you can see what you've stamped, okay? So just lift that so you can see exactly what you've stamped. Let me just, there we go. Just so you can see exactly what you've stamped. So we can place this back over, like so. Let's just turn that, let's move this out of the way and let's just turn this, there we go, like so. And what I'm going to do is just ink that up a little bit, just at the edges, because I don't want a little gap here. So I'm just going to press a little bit of the stamp there, let me show you just so you can see it just let me just move this out of the way it just sort of finishes that off a little bit so it's up to you how much you add on there and how much you don't it's entirely up to you so what I'm going to do then is decide what I'm going to put extra in here so let me just get rid of this stamp so what I'm thinking is I want maybe a few little birds in the sky. So I'm going to use my eagle stamp and it's got those little starlings on there. It's got these little starlings here. So I'm going to use that. And I do like to mix and match those images. So... Let's just place that on there. It's just you just have to decide exactly where you want your imagery. So faff around with it a little bit. Now I don't have to place my mask on there, my aperture, because this is only a small stamp. So I can spend a little bit of time just adding these little beards just to the top of this circular piece. So just allowing that just again, just to rest on the card. If you find that you struggle with a little bit of wobble, you know, you've got a little stamp on here and I've got this huge acrylic block, then place another stamp here just so that it balances out and you won't get that wobble. So it's entirely up to you how you want to. You see, you can have. Do I want a few more? You see, what you can do is let's mask this off now. Let's just mask that off. spend longer working with the mask than I do anything else. 
So let's just add a few there as well. So I've added that mask so that I don't, oh, I've, I've already gone stamped over the edge. Because what you need to remember is you need to remember that you've got this edge here to your card. So what I like to do is I like to show you how you could now this is all planned. This is all planned because what I want to do is when I'm doing a workshop, I also want to show you what to do when things go wrong. So this is the whole point of this demonstration. It's not just about showing when things go right. I think it's important that you show when things go wrong as well. So I was trying to think, how can I show a video that where I do something wrong? So this is what it's all about. So you've got your mask and you've gone over here and also You've got a little mark here. So it's just thinking the ways you can get around this. So for instance, here I could just add some birds just going off my project. So let me show you. There's, there's different ways that you can fix your project. So I'm going to show you different ways that you can fix your project. So let me have a look. So we can add the birds here so that it comes off your project. So you've seen me purposely make a mistake, which is a mistake that we often make when we're masking. So you can add your birds so that they come off your project. So this is another way that you can sort out errors with your project. If it hasn't gone how you've planned, but there's also another way you can fix it as well. So let's just add little ones. Let's bring that in to there. OK, so we've got a little smudge on the top of the card. And we've got a smudge here that we created. So here's a way around your errors. So find if there's something that you can stamp on the project. The other way around your project is to cut out this circle. If you wish, you can cut out the circle and then add it to another card. Now it's just deciding so let's just we can we're not going to waste any card so you've got this piece here let me just show you how that differs from this one here the background because I moved this one and I allowed this to soak now what you have to decide here is are you going to use this project as is or are you going to cut out and cut the circle out and add this on the top the actual circle place the circle on the top of here and start your card afresh so there are a couple of ways around creating the mistake so sometimes when you make a mistake because maybe we're not concentrating enough or it's so easy to make mistakes i don't want you to get frustrated with your project have a think if you can bring it back if you can bring your project back when, we, when we're doing videos and demonstrations, a lot of us only show beautifully finished projects. So I always said that my YouTube videos, my workshops would be warts and all. So I want you to see everything. But also sometimes I realised the other day that I've never shown a video what to do if you make a mistake. So this is what I'm trying to show here. So what I'm going to do now is obviously... I was only going to create this bauble initially, but now, because I made a mistake, 
I'm trying to rectify that mistake and still make it a project that you're happy with. So we've added our little beads. And what you want to do is then look. Yes, I'm quite happy with that. I think we're happy with that. So let's take our little beads off there. Let me just wipe. So what I'm going to do then is just grab a little bit of acetate. So now that I've changed my design a little bit, what I want to do is just add a little bit of colour to the outside. And what I'd want to do is only add a touch of colour. So I'm taking my hickory smoke and I'm just going to literally touch. You probably can't even... There we go, we've just got a little bit of colour on there. And what I'm going to do is just add a tiny bit of water and I'm just swirling that around. Now, the reason I'm swirling that around is so that I don't get any straight lines. And what I'm going to do is just add little touches of that colour just to my background. Just to add. Now, what you need to be aware of, if I touch this here, you're going to reactivate the oxide. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of colour just to my background. I don't want it too overpowering. I just want little bits of colour in the background so it looks a bit watery. There we go. Just so, no, does help if I pick that up. Just so that you've got a little bit of watery background. Okay. So what we're doing is we're saving our card. We're sort of bringing our project back. And I'm going to try and not use my heat tool if I can. Right, so what I'm going to do now is bring in that aperture. Now what I'm going to try and do now is remember you've got these edges, which I, I always normally remember. But obviously I've done it on purpose for you so you can see if you want to rectify a mistake. So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of detail here. Right, let's move this out of the way. You've got so many stamp sets. Where's my other stamp set? Don't pull out too many stamp sets at once and then it doesn't get confusing. What I want to do is take my Tree of Life stamp set and I'm going to use that little tree. We're going to take that tree. You see, I'm just wondering if I want something a little bit not quite as. Let me just have a look. I think I want something a little bit finer. This is what I'm like every time. Something a little bit finer. So what I'm thinking is this one. So I'm going to use this tree here just on my woodland stamp set. And what you need to do is have a look at your stamp sets. Just see what you can do. How you can use your stamp sets in lots of different ways. And I'm just giving that an inking with my Versafine Claire. Now I'm not stamping near the edges, I'm just stamping here. Just to give me a little bit of a tree. Just to my design. And this tree is just a little bit, it'll just give me a little bit finer detail. It's not too overpowering. Ooh, just adding that tree. So I'm going to place this over the top. I'm just going to take that again. And just add a little bit of the tree here. 
just at this edge just so that we've got a little bit of the tree coming in there and then again let's add a smaller tree just make sure when you're overzealous with the ink that you don't get that ink from your acrylic block on your design there we go let me just add a little bit of second generation right so this is what you've got at the moment and what i'm going to do is take that off just chuck that down because we can clear up a little bit later now this video is taking a little bit longer because I want to go through lots of different things. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to add a little bit of the blue to my background. Now this blue is super overpowering. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that and I'm just going to smush it around like that. Just make sure that you wipe your fingers. And what I want to do is just, just add a little bit of the blue just to my background. Just to just smush the little bit of your of your background, just so that you've got a little bit of that blue. You just, if it's a little bit too overpowering for you, just remove a little bit of the colour. So what we've got is, I will spritz that in a minute. What we've got at the moment is we're just building our design. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my little mouse. As you can see, that's got some paint on there. So this is the little mouse I want. So I'm going to give that mouse a little clean because I think it's got a little bit of paint on there. Yes, it has. Got a little bit of paint on the mouse. So let's take that acrylic block. And we're going to use our cute little mouse. And you're just going to ink that up just with your black Noctane ink. And then I can add my little mouse just here. There we go. Let's just place that back. Just place that back in our packaging. And then I'm just going to get rid of this dirty wipe and just give my hands a little bit of a, a clean. And what I'm going to do is just spritz the card with water, just so it just moves a little bit. Just so that that ink moves a little bit. And then we'll just dry And I'm just going to give that a little dry with my heat tool. Now you don't need to dry with your heat tool. You can let this dry naturally. And if you let it dry naturally, it will dry flat. What you just need to do then is when we've just finished drying this, just give everything a blot with your copy of paper, just to make sure that all that black ink is just going to be dry. As your card starts to curl, just dry it from the reverse and then dry that again. Just 
just pick up those dots now just pick up the excess ink and as it starts to peel turn the card over just so that that flattens back out again now if you let it dry naturally you're not going to have to do any of that and just bend your card whoops just so back into back into shape okay so let's take our bit of copy paper that we've got and let's just give everything a little blot just to make sure everything's okay just so that you don't get in too much of a mess right now let's bring a little bit of life to things right because we don't want to just leave it all flat so what i'm going to do is bring a little bit of white here a little bit of white to the mouse there we go and then just bring a little bit of white to these little birds just just a little bit on the wings There we go, just a little bit on the wings. And then what you can do is just add a few dots of white to the branches, just so it looks a bit snowy. Let me just lift this up. So what you're doing is you're just adding a little bit of that white, build up the white, just so it looks like you've got a little bit of snow just on those branches. Just bring just so that you've got a little bit of so it's got like a, a snowy feel just to and then you just want to bring it just add a few dots to your branches and what I want you to do is just dot your pen just over the branches because we will add some splatters but just add little dots just to your project just with your just with your gel pen so these will be little fine dots just with your gel pen you're just going to you're going to build up that white just so it looks a bit, little bit like snow so just build it up there's no point rushing this process because you want it to look the part let me show you you can see that it looks like there's some white on those branches what we're going to do then Let's grab my texture paste. Try and grab a texture paste that's a bit full. Right, let's find something. Um, let's pick up a little bit of texture paste. Nobody needs that much texture paste for what I'm doing. So just pick up a little bit of texture paste. And what I'm going to do, let's just grab something that is pointed the hardest thing sometimes is finding something that where's my little pointy tool oh i found this one so it's entirely up to you what you use so do i want the little ball tool so i've got a little ball tool here and i can pick up a little bit of this texture paste and what I can do is just pick up the texture paste and add a little bit of texture now what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of the texture paste because it's a little bit thicky and I'm just using my ball tool because I want something that I can 
I can handle in my hand. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of texture paste just so that you can you can see there's a little bit of little bit of snow and you can even add a little bit more to your branches if you want it a little bit more a little bit more textured you can add little bits just to just to your branches just here and there just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now, obviously, this texture paste, it's going to take a little bit longer to dry if you're adding thicker blobs of paste. Just be aware of that. But for me personally, I think if you're sending this to somebody special, it is just worth it just to add a few other details let me just show you so it just looks a little bit more snowy now what you can do then oh let me just obviously dry your tool because you don't want to make a mess of that let's find that lid That's it. I always seem to faff with lids. So let's just remove that. Make sure that's nice and clean because we don't want to get that in a mess. We don't want to buy tools again. Let's just move that away. So this card isn't all about rushing. What it's about is just enjoying the process, but it's also about me showing you ways to rectify things. So what I'm going to do, let's just bend that a little bit again. Let's place a little bit of glitter. I'm just using Distress Stickles Dry Glitter. Now, of course, you're never in a million years going to see the sparkle because it's not easy to pick up. But trust me, the sparkle is there. I can just see it a, bot a bit at the bottom left, but there is sparkle on there. Let's just add a little bit more. Oh yes, we can see a little bit of sparkle. So if you want to add sparkle, add a little bit of sparkle to your project because the texture paste, it will dry in the texture paste. If you find you're not picking much glitter up, then don't worry, you can add your quickie glue pen to add a little bit of sparkle as well. So you can do that also. Right, what I need now is some red. Let's see if we can find a red. I know, ruby. Next is finding some red paint. Because I have been asked how you can do the berries. Now the berries you can use your um, glue gun and you can create little dots on your non-stick craft sheet with your glue gun and then you can paint them with your alcohol markers. You can use your stickles, anything like that, you know, that will give you a bit of dimension. I haven't got any of those, so what I'm going to do is use my ruby paint which has now got something in it and I'm just going to pick up a dollop just with my ball tool and I'm just picking it up each time just to add just to the berries now your berries don't have to be 
exactly where they are on the stamp. You can add more, you can add less. If you find you haven't got enough paint on, go back and just add to the berry. You can add whatever you want. So just picking up a little bit more of that paint. So I'm just using the ball tool and you can even add your own berries. Again, if you're not getting enough paint, make sure you pick enough of that paint up just so that you can add your little berries. And just if it's just not quite enough I'm just picking up a little bit more of that paint just to make the berries a little bit thicker and dimensional so that's why I'm adding a little bit more paint which is now deciding I'm not going to come out I'll just move this away in case it splatters Let me just get another, another red, just in case. Where's the red? There we go. So just, let's see. So just continue just to add a little bit more. So if you find that the berries haven't got enough dimension to them, just add a little bit more paint. Obviously that paint, if you're adding it thicker, it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. It's the nature of the beast. There we go. So I've got my little berries. Let's just clean this away. We don't want to get in a total mess. So again, I'm showing you a way that if you haven't got all these special products, stickles and dimensional this, that and the other, then you don't have to worry. Just use a bit of paint. Not a problem at all. Push that back in there. There's always ways around it if there's something you haven't got. So don't stress about it too much. Let's move that paint out of the way. So what you've got then is you've got your berries on your project. You've got a little bit of shimmy on your project as well. Okay. Right. Do you know I've got so many stamp sets? It's madness. Let's just plonk a few of these on the floor so that we don't get in a total mess. Move that out the way. Right. Move the mouse one out the way. Which one do I want now? I want my pheasants. Just move that out the way. There we go. So I want my pheasants now. Because what the pheasants will do, they're just going to bring a little bit of sort of um, make the, the appear there's more depth because they are on there. So I'm going to add the pheasants just down here like this it just gives it a little bit more now this is a card you're going to give to someone special I will do another card another day which is all about batch making so I don't want the whole 
presents on there. So this is for somebody special. And another card that I will do will be all about batch making. Something that you can make simply. So these pheasants will give you, you know, as if you're looking afar. So it, it's like they're looking into it. So it gives you more of a feeling of a scene that you're looking into by adding the pheasants. And I'm just allowing that ink just to soak in there. And that just gives it like they're viewing in, as particularly this one here that is looking into it. And just place that back. I've got so many cards on the floor, it's hilarious. Right, so what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of just white just to just to give them a little bit of a, a snowy feel as well just put a little bit of so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of cut and dry foam that has got blue on just going to scrunch it up and I'm just going to add a little bit of blue just below just so they look grounded just so you can see that they look grounded they're not just floating okay and let's put a little bit of white on that blue just so it looks a little bit like they've got a bit of snow i will lift this up just so that you can see that just so you can see they've got a little bit of white on there that looks a little bit like snow as well right i'm now going to take let's grab this my hickory smoke Distress oxide ink, a little bit of water, and let's just add a little bit of depth just to our bauble. So it's got a little bit of depth there, a little bit darker, just right in the circle. So I'm just using my hickory smoke distress oxide ink just to just to give a little bit of dimension. Just blend that out and just write in just write into the bottom make it really a lot darker just with your distress oxide ink and you can just blend a little bit of that out just so it blends a little bit more just to give it a little bit more shading let's just Wipe all this up. There we go. Obviously your berries are going to need time to dry because you've got it quite thick on there. Right. Let's add some splatters. And just make sure that you add some really, really, really good splatters just to add to that snowy feel, just so that you can see that. So really add some good splatters to add to that snowy feel. Now, if you wanted, you could cut this bauble out if you didn't want any of the others. And, well, this isn't a bauble, but you could create this, put a little string on the top and it would be your bauble. It's entirely up to you what you wanted to do. 
so you could cut it out or you could extend the design like I have done. Right, what I'm going to do now is just add my winter sentiment from my season stamp set. I've got the winter text. And let's just cut that out. Have we got a spare piece of white card? You'd think I'd have a spare piece of white card. And let's use this. Let's move this out of the way so we don't smudge that red paint. These are all my brayed off pieces. So ink. There we go. Just stamping that winter weird there we go place that back do you like how I'm getting good and placing things back so that things don't go missing now let me just give my hands a little wipe that one is now dried but it still looks completely different because it, it moves the ink does so you've got another background that you can create as well so it's entirely up to you so let's take out let's cut out our winter weird there we go and it's funny i always cut out a little bit bigger that I need just in case I decide I want a bigger sentiment and this occasion I don't but I always cut it out a little bit bigger just in case there we go. so you just need to decide where you want to add your winter so it's it's entirely up to you where you want to add it. You can add it in several different places. Now, I don't necessarily want to put it here because I don't want your eye to go from here to here to here to here. I want to sort of keep the flow. So I either go into put it on this side to keep the flow or that side. And I think I'm going to put it on that side to give me the balance. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of blue just around that sentiment. So just play around with where you want your piece. But for me, if I add it there, it just goes with the flow. We all see things differently when we're placing them. So everybody's different when when you place things because your eyes might see something different. Just add winter. There we go. And for me, something never looks finished until it's matted and layered anyway. But what I wanted to show you is that brayed off piece. Look at the background on that. So that will definitely be made into another card. So lots of backgrounds for your winter cards. But if you look at this, this background, cut that out and add that onto that. Just, it'll look lovely. So there's just different ways you can add to that background. So let's just bend this a little more. And I can definitely see some of the shimmer now, which is nice. Now, I'm going to add this, as I said at the beginning, to a six and a half inch piece, a six and a half inch card blank, just to add it there. And what I'm going to do is just, just to draw the eye in a little bit more. I'm going to take that salty ocean and I'm just going to just go around the edges just with that salty ocean because that will draw the eye 
just in to the inner detail. We'll draw the eye into that inner detail. Just now, if you want to, you can draw your little bauble just so that you've got your bauble just just on the top and just adding that you wouldn't think it could take so much concentration would you oh it does Just so that you've got your little bauble. Let's just colour that in and then we'll add the white in. Now, you know I've always said to you, just be aware that when you're trying to add the white elements, you really should let your ink dry. That ink is not dry. And what I'm trying to do is add white on top because I'm impatient. So there we go just so that you can see there you go and then I'm going to add this to my white card which is the six and a half inch piece of card now you've got to be aware that you've still got those red blobs dots of paint don't go and put your finger on those. So just place, just make sure you've sort of got it in the right place before you actually commit, before you press down. Make sure that you've got that in the right place. Now, you know, normally I would use a piece of copier paper and I would press that down. I don't want to do that when you've got that red paint on there because all you're going to do is squish that red paint and you don't want to do that. You don't want to squish it. So just be patient and press the edges down of your card because it's got that moisture in, it's trying to fight against you. Now, what you want to do, let's make, where's my little brush? We want to make it so that white card, our white card mount, just comes into play. So we're just picking up that pigment. I'm just going to, I'm just going to add a little bit of splatter just to bring in the actual card mount just so it just comes in to the design there we go so let's just clean up our mess before we take a look at the card so i'm hoping you found the video useful Sometimes I waffle a little bit, but what I try to do in my YouTube videos or workshops is to give as much information as possible, just so that you can see this, just so you can see the detail in that card. And what I'm going to do now is just go in a little bit more, just a little bit darker, with my Inktense pencil, just a little bit darker, just to give it a little bit more depth. Let me just blend that out a little bit more. There we go. So there you go, your card is completely flat. It's got lots of little details on there for somebody very special. 
it's got lots of details it's got lots of texture it's got some shimmer with the glitter it's got your little berries and let's just add a little bit of shadow just under my sentiment just to bring that out a little bit just so that it just looks a little bit more shaded there you go and that is your card finished yes it takes a little bit longer but i wanted to point out a few pointers just so that you can either rectify errors and just so that you know none of us are perfect we all make mistakes and I want you I want to, you to feel included inclusive and I want you to know that we all have things that we make errors with and I don't want to just show perfect cards made without showing some slip ups because I need you to see warts and all so I hope you've enjoyed that video I hope you've enjoyed the step by steps and I shall see you all soon Love to all. Bye for now.